This is the fifth part of Chapter 3 for Standard 8, Force and Pressure. If you haven't watched the first four parts, please click on the link in the description box below. Hey, this video was made just for you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Now let us study about atmospheric pressure in more detail. One atmosphere is equal to 101 into 10 raised to 3 Pascal, which is equal to 1 bar, which is equal to 10 raised to 3 millibar. So these are different units that are used in order to measure atmospheric pressure. You can either use the unit of atmosphere or Pascal or bar or millibar, but the most commonly used is hectopascal and we can find it out by using 1 millibar is approximately equal to 10 raised to 2 pascal or in other words 101 pascal will give you 1 millibar. Atmospheric pressure is specified in the units millibar or hectopascal. So these are the two very common units that are used to measure atmosphere. But the other units like atmosphere and pascal and bar can also be used. The atmospheric pressure at a point in air is equal from all sides. So any point in air, for example, if you take this point in air above the surface of the earth, it will have equal amount of pressure from all the sides, whether it be from the top or from the bottom or from any side. How is this pressure created? If air exists in a closed container, the air molecules in random motion continuously hit the walls of the container. In this interaction, a force is exerted on the walls of the container. Pressure is created due to this force. Let us take this only as the example of this cylinder. In this, let us take this particle. The pressure that is exerted on this particle would be because of the motion of the other particles around it. These particles, because they are in constant motion, they will hit the surface of the cylinder and then move. And they will continuously do this until they keep on hitting other particles. And therefore, because of all these particles hitting each other, there is a force created. And this force also creates pressure. We constantly bear the atmospheric pressure on our heads. Now, whenever you stand on the surface of the earth, there is all these particles that are present on top of you. And because of all these particles, there is a constantly a pressure that is acting on your head. And this is atmospheric pressure. However, the cavities in our body are also filled with air and arteries and veins are filled with blood. So within us, we have certain cavities that are filled with air, whereas we have certain vessels like the arteries and veins which are filled with blood and other fluids. Therefore, we do not get crushed under water and due to atmospheric pressure as the pressure is balanced. So now, all this pressure that is created on, on top of our heads because of atmosphere is cancelled out because of the pressure within our bodies. So, within our bodies, we have all this fluid and air which is also exerting its pressure on the opposite direction. And because they are almost equal, they will cancel each other out and therefore we are able to survive within the water or also on the surface of the earth. The earth's atmospheric pressure decreases with height from the sea level as shown in the previous figure. So, as you go up on top of the surface of the earth, that is when you climb mountains and hills, you will notice that the pressure on top of those mountains is very low. And because of this, sometimes it becomes difficult for us to breathe. Because at this level on top of the mountains, the air particles are less and therefore oxygen is also less. And because of this, the atmospheric pressure is also decreased. So, for example, if you see over here, on the surface of the earth, the air pressure would be very high, for example on this point. But if you travel up away from the surface of the earth, at this point, the air pressure would be very low. And this is shown in this graph. So at this point, the height, that is the distance from the surface of the earth is zero. But as we move in this direction on the x-axis, the height, that is the distance from the surface of the earth, goes on increasing. 
So because of this, we have seen in this figure, it is showing us that as we move to the right side of the x-axis, the pressure goes on decreasing. The next topic we will study about is called buoyant force. Try this. Take a plastic bottle and fix the lid tightly. Now place it in the water and see. It will float on the water. So if you take a plastic bottle which is completely empty inside and you fix the lid very tightly and place it on water, you will see that it is floating on the water. Try and push it into the water. Even when pushed, it continues to float. So if you put this push this plastic bottle into the water, you will notice that after you push it into the water and leave it, it will come up again on the surface and continue to float. This experiment can also be done with a plastic hollow ball. So if you take a plastic ball, which is hollow, that is, it is empty inside and repeat this experiment. That is, if you push this ball also into the water, it will come up and continue to float. Now, fill the water bottle with water to the fullest capacity and close the lid and release in the water. Now, you remove this bottle out and fill it completely with water inside. And you again, after closing the lid, release it into the water. You will realize the bottle, water bottle will start floating inside the water. It will not completely sink nor will it float on the surface, but it will be floating inside the water. Why does this happen? Have you ever thought about it? Now, let us see the reason why it happens. The empty plastic bottle floats on the surface of the water. On the contrary, means on opposite to it, the bottle full of water floats inside the water, but does not go to the bottom. If so, when you do this experiment, you will realize that the bottle filled with water will sink inside, but it will not touch the surface of the bucket. That is, it will not completely sink inside. It will be in the middle somewhere floating inside the water. The weight of the empty bottle is negligible as compared with the weight of the water inside. So, if you weigh the water separately and you weigh the bottle, you will realize that the weight of the bottle is very less. That is why it is negligible. That is, it is so less compared to the weight of the water. Such a bottle with weight neither floats on the surface nor does it go to the bottom. So, because of the bottle having a very less weight and just the water inside the bottle is giving the maximum weight, therefore you will notice that this bottle will not completely sink inside and it will be in the middle floating inside the water. This means the force due to gravity acting downwards, that is Fg. If you see this arrow Fg, that shows us the force of gravity acting on it must have been balanced by an opposing force in the upward direction, Fb, on the bottle filled with water. So why does this bottle not sink completely inside? It is because the force due to gravity, that is this arrow Fg, is balanced by this force, Fb. And what is this Fb force? This force must have originated from the water surrounding the bottle. So, no, nothing else can tell us what this FB is, but because it is the water that is surrounding the bottle, that must be acting on this bottle and creating this FB force. The upward force acting on the object in water or other fluid or gas is called buoyant force. So, this force that is acting on the bottle in the upward direction has been given a name called as buoyant force. And this force is seen when objects are within fluid, that is, it can be gas or liquid. Use your brain power. While pulling a bucket from a well, the bucket full of water immersed fully in water appears to weigh less than when it has been pulled out of the water. So why does this happen? You must have noticed whenever you pull a bucket from a well, that when the bucket is inside the water in the well and when you're filling the bucket with water and pulling it up when it is inside the water, it will be very light and you will not even notice the weight of the bucket and water. But as soon as the bucket filled with water comes to the surface of the water and now you're pulling it out of the water, you will notice now it becomes much heavier and now you can actually feel the weight of the water inside the bucket. So why does this happen? It happens because of the buoyant force that we just studied about. So, when the bucket 
filled with water is inside the water that time the buoyant force created on the bucket of water by the surrounding water nullifies that is it cancels out the weight of the force that is created by gravity and therefore you do not feel the weight of the bucket much but when you pull the bucket outside the wa water that time there is no buoyant force that is existing on it now so therefore only what is acting on it is the force of gravity which is pulling the bucket filled with water towards the earth surface that is towards the lower side and now when you are trying to pull the bucket upwards you have to put more pressure because now you have to cancel out the force of gravity therefore when the bucket is filled with water is pulled out you feel that it becomes more he heavier than when it was inside the water try this take a piece of thin aluminium sheet and dip it in a water in a bucket what do you observe now shape the same piece of aluminium into a small boat and place it on the surface of the water so aluminium is a metal and this metal can be made into sheets similar to sheets of paper so when you take one of these aluminium sheets and dip it in a bucket filled with water you will notice that the aluminium sinks to the bottom of the bucket and now when you take the same sheet and fold it into a small boat and place it on the surface of the water now after folding it into a boat you will notice that now it floats on the water and it does not sink the same sheet which was sinking into the water when folded into a shape of a boat it now floats on the water this is similar to the huge ships that transport goods and also are used for traveling these ships are made with metals when this metal is placed in water it will sink easily to the bottom but even though the ship is very heavy because it is in the shape of a ship so because of its shape it is able to float on the surface of the water an iron nail sinks in water but why does the massive steel ship float on it so because of the shape of the ship it is able to float on it but the shape of an iron nail cannot be able to float on water and therefore it sinks when an object is dipped in a liquid a buoyant force acts on it and hence it appears that the weight of the object is reduced so this is similar to the example in which we were pulling water from the well in that example when the bucket of water was inside the water we observed that we were not feeling it as if it was very heavy it appeared as if the weight of the bucket was less that was because of the buoyant force so it becomes easier to swim in sea water than in fresh water fresh water is the water found in lakes and rivers and sea water is usually salty this is because the density of sea water is higher than the density of fresh water due to salts dissolved in the sea water so sea water is usually salty because of several salts that are dissolved in it so this salts increases the density of the sea water as compared to the fresh water which does not have these salts density is a property of liquids and this property is increased when salts are added to the water in this book you have seen that lemon sinks in a glass filled with water but it floats when we stir in two spoons of salt in the water so when we are stirring the salt inside the water we are doing what we are doing is we are increasing the density of that water and because we are increasing the density now the lemon will be easily able to float on the water in salty water the buoyant force exceeds the gravitational force so usually gravitational force acts downwards and this buoyant force acts in the opposite direction that is upwards and usually both of these forces are equal and they cancel each other out as we had seen in the previous examples but now when we are adding salt in the water what happens is this buoyant force increases and therefore now we have more buoyant force and therefore this will easily exceed the gravitational force that is why the lemon starts to float after adding salt so buoyant force depends on two factors and let's see what these two factors are the first is the volume of the object and the second is the density of liquid 
the buoyant force is more if the volume of the dipping object is more so as we are increasing the volume of the object the buoyant force also increases so this is a directly proportional relationship and now let it also depends on the density of the liquid more the density of liquid more is the force of buoyancy and this is also a directly proportional relationship for the answers to this exercise and other free worksheets please go to jkacademypro.com this was the end of part 5 for the part 6 video please click on the link in the description box below